I always had a full-time job as I was starting any business. And it wasn't until two years into the brand Sunday and the Bible study that I was able to quit my job. But I was, I was paying 17 other people before I paid myself a dollar. You are now listening to the Highlight Real Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, certified leadership trainer with the John Maxwell team and best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, Dom Reitman. And you're going to be getting some wonderful tips and techniques to advance yourself coming up next. Today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great glorious saying glamour since the Going North podcast, and we got one heck of a super special awesome human for you today, thanks to my good buddy, Pastor Bob Thibodeau, who's also a fellow Marylander as well. He also hails from the land of charm, crime, and crab cakes. Well, I'd say 40 miles out of it, but he's in Bel Air, but hey, I rock the Baltimore area, but that ain't the point. We got one heck of a super special awesome guest for you today, because my goodness, Fellow millennial entrepreneur, or should I say a fellow millennial Christian entrepreneurial author, because my man is a course creator, he's a husband of one, and he's got some pets as well, and he's also engaged with churches, and my man knows how to bring the freaking heat, because not only has he rocked some mics in the past, he's also rocking the entrepreneurial game today. <laughs> So let's give it up for the ZW himself, who's going to bring the zazzle and the wind to blow you into your next direction of greatness. Let's give it up for Zach Wendell. How you doing today, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really pumped to be here. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Like, shoot, like, especially learning that we're both born in the best month of the year, September. Hands down, can't beat that. Yes, September fifteenth over here. I, I I feel like it's coming up, but I think we're for we're pretty far away. We're about halfway there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's enjoy it like that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like it's, it's an exciting time, but it's like no, nah, let's not rush it though. <laughs> right, right, literally. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like the last 15 years has been like, where did that go? Even the last five. Oh my goodness. It's gone fast. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. You, you, you're so right about that. It's like, Oh, once you're out of college, it's like, Hey, hey next day at 30. <laughs> like what happened at 25? <laughs> I don't Literally. Even feel <laughs> we just skipped a little bit of time. Yeah, man. <laughs> so feeling good, feeling, feeling like it's going to be a great year. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be better than all the tires. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So, my goodness, man. So, as with all introductions, they're not allowed to be 15 and a half days long. And I'm pretty sure we've got all sorts of stuff. So, am I filling in any cavities who don't know about the Mighty Z just yet? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, my name is Zach Wendall. I run a company called The Brand Sunday, and we create resources to help people grow in their relationship with God and understand the Bible better. Uh, our main product was called The Bible Study, and we uh, released that about four years ago, and it's helped hundreds of thousands of people grow closer to God and uh, blows my mind every day just watching our orders uh, be sent out from our warehouse. And uh, most recently came out with a book called launch with God, helping, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, launch businesses and live out their purpose. Uh, I got a new book coming out later this year called see the good, which we can talk about later. Super pumped on that. Uh, just a lot in the works, a lot, a lot of buns in the oven right now, you know, <laughs> a lot of things to dance about. A lot of buns in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you can say that again because we like to yeah. keep it falling on a bun here, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Man, my goodness, man. So, like, with all of that, like, with, <laughs> with everything, like the brand Sunday, like, it's such a simple idea, and it's kind of funny that 
you could actually pull off that business and not get a trademark issue with it. Like how how that even work, man? Because folks would be like Sunday school. Wait, what? The yeah. Brand Sunday. <laughs> what? How can you brand the day? It's already here. <laughs> That's a great question, man. We have an amazing trademark attorney. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, when it comes to like certain products, you can change up some words and, and it gets covered. If it was just the word Sunday, it probably wouldn't have at this level, but it's based on like the categories that it's in. So we own like the Bible study in the, in Bible studies, and we own the phrase, the Bible is good for you in uh studies and we can put it on books and clothing and stuff um yeah we have we honestly we have like 25 different trademarks right now that we uh have been working for a while so um gotta have the right attorney (laughs) yeah man yeah man definitely indeed man i guess uh, folks have to start saying the bible is great for you so that way you don't pop up out of their phone and be like hey how you doing buddy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you read that scripture proverb somewhere right. <laughs> right. i'm gonna need you to know, put some money on this cash up real quick <laughs> you're infringing on some territory <laughs> <laughs> yes that's that's totally it yeah man like kudos to you man for doing that man like that's just so beautiful the fact that especially with your entrepreneurial past, because if I'm not mistaken, you've actually had an entrepreneurial mind and done multiple entrepreneurial ventures basically almost all your life, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, totally. Ever since I was a kid, really, I think I started my first entrepreneurial endeavor when I was like nine years old. Um, We would literally go down to Florida for two or three weeks every single year, and I would make shark tooth necklaces. And I would walk up and down the beach as a nine-year-old with my arm full of, of these shark tooth necklaces. And I would sell them for 10 bucks a pop. And I was like crushing it, selling my entire arm's worth every single day. And so I, that kind of bug kind of bit me at an early age. And uh, my mom was always super encouraging when it came to chasing after uh, things that um, were either artistic or just after my dreams really. And so over, over the years, I had my hand in a bunch of different things like uh, clothing lines, recording studio. Uh, I ran a booking agency for a while, booking bands into venues. I was working on a TV show for a bit. I tried a ton of different things and I learned a ton from them. I failed almost every single one of them, but during the process, I learned so much and was able to really grow and, and be in a great spot for releasing uh, our newest brand and our newest product, the Bible study and the brand Sunday. And just failing so much in the past really set us up for success with the new, new product and just seeing God's hand of blessing all over it has been incredible. Something that I, that I never expected because a lot of people told me that it was crazy to write a book and print it myself and do everything in-house because I had never done that before. And I didn't even really enjoy writing. I, it wasn't like a passion of mine. I didn't, I, I didn't wake up saying, Hey, I want to write a book. It just kind of, I just kind of stumbled into it. And I'm so happy that I didn't listen to the people that were discouraging because at the end of the day, it really pushed me forward and allowed me to get into the best spot I could be in for launching this newest business. Amen to that, dude. Yeah, man, because it's really powerful there, man, because it's like, yeah, hey, it was make you greater in multiple ways. It's like they give you stuff not to do to make sure you avoid. Yes. It's like, hey, like printing books, you're doing that in-house. Like, man, you should sleep in-house or watch Netflix in-house, man. What are you doing right. printing books in-house? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah, just trying to figure out the whole process. I think as an entrepreneur is like, man, especially when you're first starting out, you have no idea how you're, how the systems work. I didn't know the publishing industry at all. I didn't know the clothing industry at all, but you figure it out. It's all trial and error. You, you make a ton of mistakes and it's the ones that are successful are the ones that keep getting up and learning from their mistakes and, and pressing on to, to the future. Because I, I believe that if you keep getting knocked down and you keep getting back up, that something um, great is going to come your way. And so with all that is like, yeah, I, you learn from, from trial and error completely. 
And so with printing, that's what we did. We, we tried different printers. We figured out what worked, what doesn't work. We wasted a bunch of money, but then we also like, like at the end of the day, we were making sure that our systems were all running smooth and, and now they, they kind of run, uh, run themselves in a lot of ways, which is incredible. So it's all about putting the right pieces in the right places and figuring out what works for, for your, um, specific company. Ah, definitely say that again. Indeed. Definitely say that again. Indeed. Yeah, it's actually funny how authorship wasn't even in your realm of influence. Cause I believe your mom was a writer, right? Or still is she a writer. Was. Yeah, she's, she still is. Absolutely. She writes way better than me. So her books are way better. But yeah, she's writing uh, a bunch right now. And I saw her writing for a lot of my childhood and even into my adult life and just seeing like her do that was incredible, but it wasn't ever something that I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's right. Until out of nowhere, you had a wonderful experience. So, yeah. Well, it probably wasn't Jonah level, but I'm pretty sure it, it, it didn't like smack you to the other side of the freaking the globe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely did. Yeah. Threw me out to, I ended up moving out to Australia to study the Bible out there. Cause I was really questioning my faith and just questioning a lot of things in my life at the time, because I was living out my parents' faith and I was uh, just trying to like be all I could be, but I didn't know what that really looked like. And so I hit a spot where I was like, God, I need to spend two years studying the word only and figuring out if I like, if this is real, like if, if this is what I want my life to be a base around. And I ended up moving literally to the other side of the world, to Australia, to this small city called Malulaba, which is on the Sunshine Coast. And we studied the Bible for 12 hours a day, six days a week, super intensive. Um, if, it was, if it was Jonah week, for instance, we would literally read Jonah five times through and create our own commentary, same for every single book of the Bible. So Genesis, it's a four and a half hour read. We'd have to read it five times through and come up with our own thoughts and notes and questions and everything like that. And so by the time I came home from out there, I had, I had 20, 30, 40 pages of notes on every book of the Bible. And I was like, my goodness, I really have something here that I think could help a ton of people. And so I thought I was going to teach. I, honestly, I thought I was going to move back out to Australia and be a part of the teaching team out there, but it just didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. And I ended up staying back in Minneapolis and man, we turned all those notes. We took out like kind of, we took out all of my thoughts on them and all of my opinions on things to make it very even across the board and make it very palatable for anybody, no matter what you believe. And essentially we just provide a tool for your, uh, to hold your hand as you read through the Bible, whatever translation you fits you and you read through it. And we just help you out a little bit along the way and hold your hand through the process. And man, but if I wouldn't have gone out to Australia, if I, if I wouldn't have had that Jonah moment, I literally have a Jonah tattoo on my arm of a huge whale because it was so impactful for me. Cause it was like, th this is, this is me chasing after something that I, I know is going to change my life. And so, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but man, you got to admit, that's freaking intense, though. Like, my goodness, Jonah Week reading the book over and over again like that in 30 pages of content for every book in the Bible. You're basically essentially writing your own Bible to the Bible. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Totally. Yeah, it was wild. I was just, I was at my parents' house just the other day, and they they have all my notes still in a box. I mean, it's it's like, it's two, three, it's probably two feet of pages of notes and notebooks and like actually it's probably more than that it's it's a whole case full it's crazy i should i, I gotta i gotta take that heck yeah man be like hey this is where it all started folks that's right right Good day baby yep that's right sell it on ebay one day <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> 
That's right. Tell him, hey, I had to fight a kangaroo to get to this place. You got to let him know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was real. Like seeing kangaroos around for the first time. Like I'm in Minneapolis. All I knew was Minneapolis and South Carolina, really. And seeing kangaroos and wallabies and stuff for the first time. Oh, my goodness. Sharks, jellyfish, the whole deal. We were in it. Huntsman spiders. I remember I was on FaceTime one day with my parents and um, I have the phone out and out of the corner of my eye, I see something moving right next to my head. And I turned around and it was, it's called a huntsman spider. These things are a, the size of your hand, like fully stretched out. And I have pretty big hands. And <laughs> like, what do you do with that? You, you can't just like, you can't throw a shoe at it. The thing's it'll it'll jump on you it's the size of a cat <laughs> oh god like these oh, things are massive no. it was so <laughs> like bro we our house in australia for some reason you like always just keep the door open where we were at you'd be sitting on the couch and all of a sudden a dog would run through the house like you don't know whose dog this is birds would fly in we had this thing we named him frank eventually it was a, it was an alligator lizard. It was like a two foot lizard that would just come into the house, hang out with us and leave every couple of days. So we named him Frank and it was, we were living in the jungle, bro. <laughs> but so fun. I wouldn't change my time over there for anything. It was completely life-changing. My relationship with God was completely transformed every everything in my life was changed by spending time out there with those people and then also just spending time like that much dedicated time in the word it was it was truly incredible amen to that dude that's what i'm talking about and like if anything that's probably worth a sim that's probably worth three seminary degrees to be honest doing something yeah. <laughs> like that so how did you find out about it did a pastor tell you about it did you just do a google search like how'd that even come about it was through different mutual friends and some, some research through some different programs. And it was literally just this like school, small school of biblical studies program with 20 different people. And yeah, super just intense for a nine month period of time. And yeah, it's awesome. Wow. So you're saying the Bible study is a baby that's grown up. <laughs> yes, literally. Right. So the Bible study was essentially birthed out of my love for it out there. And yeah, man, we came out with that in the Bible study was in 2017. We ended up doing a Kickstarter campaign and ran a 30 day successful campaign. So we had enough money to print the books and we ended up releasing it a few months later and it just started to grow from there. And um, over the last four years now, which is insane. Um, I was able to quit my job and hire a bunch of my friends. And now we have a team all over the country. And it's pretty incredible just seeing the impact that it's had on people's faith, how they've grown in their relationship with the Bible. Um, for me, I was always super intimidated by the Bible and overwhelmed by it. Like we look at this huge book and with small pages and, and, and small fonts. And it's like, yo, I don't even know where to begin. And so this was essentially a project for me because it was something that I knew that I needed and I couldn't find anything like it. And so when I can't find something, I, I tend to make it myself. And so this was, this was that first endeavor. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm talking about in days. Congrats again on that, man. Cause that's, freaking major especially like coming off the heels of four failed businesses too so with basically entrepreneurship and just basically having to get back up again and reassess readjust and start all over again what will probably be the i guess in addition from just gaining all that biblical wisdom all in in you and through your spirit and everything like has there been anything else that you gain any major gains you gain from that experience of having to really i guess start and have four businesses fail only to finally get this fifth one off the ground and soaring? Yeah, I think I learned a ton of stuff. I think some of the biggest things is working with the right people and realizing that 
that we don't know everything ourselves, even as like a early uh, to mid 20 year old, I just, you think, you know, everything and you think you can figure it out when in reality, a lot of people can do things better than you. And so taking a step back and, and hiring the right people, putting the right people in the right places and knowing like, man, I'm going to double down on my strengths and I'm going to hire out my weaknesses. Cause otherwise if I'm sit, if I'm sitting, trying to grow in my weaknesses, I'm if it's, if it's going to be a long process, it's a waste of time in the immediate, immediate future. And so I was always like, if I, if I don't know how to do this, I'm going to find somebody that can do it better than me. Even if that means I'm going to be working a full-time job. I always had a full-time job as I was starting any business. And it wasn't until two years into the brand Sunday and the Bible study that I was able to quit my job. But I was, I was paying 17 other people before I paid myself a dollar. And I think a lot of people that are starting out, they'll quit their job right away and just shoot from the hip with it and try to make it work. And then after it fails in a few months, they give up. And so I'm always such an advocate for people to have that security, have that safety net, because you just never know. Like it could be 10, 15 years until your business becomes successful, but so many times on social media, we see younger people blowing up at a really early age. And we're like, yo, they like, I'm behind. Those guys are 24 crushing it. I'm 25. Like I'm behind when in reality, <laughs> the majority of like successful business owners don't even become like find their first success until mid thirties at the earliest. And so just knowing and just giving yourself a bunch of grace and realizing like, Hey, I'm going to have a normal job during the day and then I'm going to work at night. But that that's also tough as a 20 year old, especially when you have, uh, when you're being invited to things or there's cool things going on in your city, or you want to be a part of, of different things. You want to watch games, whatever, like you got to say no to a lot of stuff and, like, that's a bummer a lot of the time. Like, I don't want to, I want to be out with my friends. I don't necessarily want to be like saying, saying no to all of that. But at the end of the day, I think if you really believe in something and you find it to be important that it's okay to say no to things. I have this rule where I, I have two or three things that are super important to me. So whether it's my family close tight knit of friends or business, if it doesn't line up with those three or benefiting those three in some way, I allow myself to say no to things. And just having that set in place has been really transformational for me because if something presents itself and it is a really cool idea, but I should be working on one of the other three areas of my life, then it's okay to say no. Other cool things are going to pop up and I need to remind myself not to get stressed and bummed out if I can't um, say yes to things. And I think a lot of, I think more people need to give themselves that grace. Like it's okay to say no um, if it's not going to necessarily benefit you in the, um, in the future. And, um, but we get, we get caught up in wanting to say yes to everything. And I think that's a, that's a bummer for a lot of people. Yeah, man, definitely can say that again, indeed. And you mentioned two or three areas, man. So I'm, I have a good guess on what two of them are. But mind sharing them if you don't mind for folks still listening. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's it's uh, so it's family. So it's my wife and and my parents and my wife's family. It's my business and what we're trying to do, uh, which is we have a bunch of our hands in a bunch of different things right now. Um, and then also like our, our tight knit group of friends. So we have a few friends that are, that we're really close to and, and just growing in those. I think as you get older, you, your relationships and your friendships change quite a bit because when you're younger, you want to be friends with everybody. And, and it's really cool to have a ton of friends. And then you realize over time that a lot of your friends may be more acquaintances, because you, we can't, we can't have, we don't have the attention span to give everybody to the attention that they deserve. 
And so really, really choosing a few people that are really important to you that you really want to do life with and focusing on building those relationships up. And I think, I think that's incredibly important. So those are, those are my three. And so if, if something comes my way and it doesn't line up with building those three up or benefiting those three in some way, then, then um, I give myself permission to say no. Ah, uh, there you go. So I'm talking about indeed. That's right, indeed. It's just like drugs, y'all. If it looks good, just say no. That's right, indeed. It could be <laughs> sheep's clothing, baby. It could be a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yes indeed i gotta blame the corn for the maze part though but yeah man so with all this wonderful knowledge you've acquired and all these lessons you've acquired man like in addition to that you've ever gone back every now and then and picture you know what maybe i should have a brand sunday mixtape just for fun <laughs> <laughs> So what he's referring to is I used to rap. <laughs> I was uh I used to own a studio and actually before I even owned the studio I uh I used to perform like all the time but I was really awful and so, but truly late like recently I've been thinking about you know doing a little one or two one or two song EP just for fun. I love music so much and I know it's not like something that I'm going to do for a living, but I enjoy doing it every once in a while. So maybe, maybe one day Sunday E pre we gotta, we gotta come back with it. There you go. Let me get prime time Stein on the feature, man. That's right. <laughs> <in days. laughs> But yeah, man, in terms of rapping and creating, you actually created this wonderful gift, this wonderful book called Launch with God, man. Like, dude, like so many folks in the faith need to really tap into their wonderful entrepreneurial abilities if they have, if God has given them that ability. And some folks don't really have the confidence to tap into that. And you pen this wonderful book, man. Yeah. And like so many philosophies, man. Like what led you to write and publish this book, man? Thank you, man. That means so much. It's been a, um, it's been a long time coming. I think we, I mean, for years, even when I was working on businesses that weren't necessarily successful, I was trying out a bunch of different things and, um, and people saw my hustle and my grind and what I was learning from it from a distance. And so I would frequently get asked to sit down with people to pick so they could pick my brain on things and, and help them with their business ideas and kind of speak into their creative process a little bit. And so I had this built up where it was like, man, instead of, instead of meeting with everybody individually, what if I made something that could help uh, people on a, on a larger scale? And so I started just throwing ideas together with one of my close friends and it was actually his idea um, to turn it into a book and um i kind of ran with it and we ended up releasing it last um november and it's been incredible to see just how it's impacted people's business and um, just encourage them along the way a big thing for us for me and my in my teaching in the book is um how it's how how as as believers we um, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit in you, we should find some way to make it positively impact the world around us, um, whether that's just our neighborhood or our city or our state or the world at large. And so finding, finding a way to make some sort of change and to really bring um, heaven on earth. And so that's been uh, really cool just to see and, and uh, helping, helping think think through things with people. Like if they want to start a coffee shop, maybe they use fair trade organic beans and they have some sort of give back program where they're making sure everybody's get, getting paid a, a good wage. Um, 
if they're making clothing, for instance, to make sure that the, like, you don't have to put a Christian slogan on the shirts. You can just make really good shirts and maybe you're clothing the homeless, um, with, with your, uh, with your, with your shirts or whatever it is. I think no matter what we're doing, we can find some sort of way to, to bless the people around us through our business and help them become better person, better people. Oh yeah. I can say that again, man. Cause you got this earth shattering thought in the book. I forgot which chapter exactly. Cause you organize the book so well, where it's like, if you're busy, you can like read a couple pages and you'll basically have a yeah. completion feeling is just the wonderful thought of from the book of Genesis, man. Yeah, totally. I think like so often we can have a dream and get super overwhelmed by it because it can seem just like such a daunting task, especially if we have a full-time job at the time. And, but really I, I like to break things down into like the law of compound interest where it's literally do something small every single day towards your goal. And over time, it's going to compound into something so much greater. And you're going to have a finished product or project before you even know it. And so uh, if you're, if you want to be a designer, maybe that means you draw one logo a day, or maybe that means you research something. It doesn't have to be for hours. It could be for 10 minutes. Maybe it means you send an email to somebody. Um, as long as you're doing something every single day, over time, it's just going to be so much bigger than if you were to spend an hour on a Tuesday um, working towards your dreams. So always, and then at, at the same time, it's now always in the back of your mind and you're always thinking about it and it'll, it'll just grow as you, as you continue to spend time on it. So that's, that's something that's really important to me. It's something that I learned uh, I think I was 22 when I learned that it was my, my senior year of college and it kind of changed everything for me. Cause it really made me look at like, okay, let me, let me have every small win, um, be a success to me and realize like, yeah, I don't need to do something major every single day, but if I do something small, it can be like, okay, that was my win for the day and, and keep, keep it going from there. Man, that's a big nugget right there to drop right there, man. Just celebrate the small wins, dude. Like, yeah, like totally. That's... <laughs> yeah, and we can get like so caught up in in like having to do major things at an early age and in such a quick amount of time. When in reality, so many things take way longer than you would ever expect. I'm always like, I have pretty high expectations and I set large goals for things. But at the end of the day, like I know it's going to take so much longer and, and I never get frustrated when it does, because that's just the way that life goes. And I think when you're, when you're younger, you look, you, you chase after things. And if we don't see immediate success, we're like, man, maybe I'm not the right person for the job. And now it's on to the next thing. When in reality, most things take much, much longer, like I would say years longer. And so just continuing on putting one foot in front of the other, knowing that success isn't going to come in a super short amount of time for most people, it's usually a, a pretty lengthy process. Yeah, man, definitely can see that again. Yeah, we want that overnight success overnight, but it happens over many nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could be years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'd be freaking so many years, so many sleepless nights. Like, oh, I finally make it. Hey, hey, hey yeah. what's this silver I see? It's a coin. Wait, no, it's my hair. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> So if this book launched with God was a food, what would it be and why? If it was a food? Oh, wow. Um, if it was a food, I would say it would be an acai bowl. <laughs> I 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what the heck is that? <laughs> I heard a bowl, so I'm like, okay, it's got to be something in the bowl. It's a fruit bowl with, uh, with different grains and granola on it and stuff because it's, it's good for you. Uh, it's nourishing. And there's a bunch of ingredients that, uh, that all work together, but also work separately. And you can, you can learn something from all of them. Uh, and that's uh, acai bowl, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So where do you get those at? <laughs> or is that, so, is that a recipe you can just find to make yourself or both? <laughs> I think you can get them at most health food stores and restaurants and juice shops. I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I love my acai bowls. I eat too many of them, I think. But they're good hey. for you, so I like it. Hey, it sounded good and healthy to be. Shoot, I mean, hey, if it's good for you, tastes good, shoot, go for it. Like, you know. Yeah. It's got to be both. It's got to be both. <laughs> yeah. Well, some folks say it's got to be great. <laughs> 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 oh, man. So since this is far from your first rodeo on the guest side of the game on these podcasts, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? Oh, man. You're hitting me with some zingers. If I, if I didn't, if I wasn't doing the Bible study, if I wasn't writing, if money wasn't an option, what would I be doing? And the answer is I would be doing a food travel TV show. I love traveling and I love to eat. And I think that would be the coolest thing in the world. I've wanted to do it for a decade. And I think one day I, I'm going to give it a shot. But I would love, like, literally when I go to any city, the number one thing is figuring out what I'm going to eat there and what's, like, native to that area, what's something unique that I can try that I can't get in Minneapolis. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I would do. Uh, there you go. There you go. Foodalism. <laughs> you take food and evangelism like foodalism. <laughs> 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 I like that. I'm using that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, you got to spread the good word, but hey, I got to feed this belly too. You know what? Need some word, need some good food. So here's the good food spots for you. <laughs> exactly. Jesus came eating and drinking. So that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, got to have that water, got to have that wine for the party, you know. Yeah. Got to have them fishes, you know, fishes of men. Got to be fishing the businesses, you know, which is right. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. So my goodness, my goodness. Well, getting close to that time, so probably two more questions I'll let you escape. So you got this wonderful book coming out later this year called See the Good, man. So tell us a little bit about what to expect from that book, man, because folks need to see the good because it's it's been nothing but crazy 10x totally. now these past two years. <laughs> yeah, totally. And that's that's everybody's conversation right now is how crazy life is and how bad it is a lot of the times. And I think it's important for us to take a step back and really see how God is moving all around us. And so the, the focus of this book is how to find grace, gratitude, and optimism in every day. And so that's, that's what it's based around. It's actually available. I don't think we've even announced this yet. So I'm going to let your audience know it's on Amazon right now, but it's not coming out until like November 15th. So it's called See the Good by Zach Wendell. Uh, Pre-orders help a ton. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked on it. I feel like this book is my life message. So we're going all in on it. We got a bunch of really cool things planned and I uh, can't wait to share more about that when the time comes. Oh, uh, shoot. There we go. Grace, gratitude. And what was the third letter? Optimism. Optimism. There we go. That's right. D. You got to see the good. <laughs> That's right. D. That's right. D. It's going to be so many O's and good. It'll be like a Cheerios box, baby. That's how good it is. Y'all see it. That's right. D. Believe it and see it. See it to believe it. You love to see it and believe it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man awesome <laughs> oh man well we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again but you're in the current year with all of your knowledge and experience 
what advice would you give to yourself? That's a great question. I would say go all in if I was 25. So nine years ago, I would say go all in on social media, especially TikTok right when it gets launched, because that will change your life. That's what I'd say. And probably buy some Bitcoin or something because <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Indeed. It's a bit of coin y'all. That's right. That's right. A big bit of coin at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, that's right. That media, the socials, y'all. That's right. That's right indeed. They gotta be the socials, y'all, on the social media. So speaking of socials, all the social media, for those who need to follow you and yours and keep up with all the wonderful stuff that you're doing, what's the best way for folks to do so? Man, on uh Instagram, uh at Zach Windall at the brand Sunday, on TikTok at Zach Windall, and then on our website, thebrandsunday.com. Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. Check out my man, Zach the Mighty Z, y'all. That's right, indeed. The brand Sunday, baby. He's got all the spiritual ice cream for you, baby. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed, baby. That ice cream Sunday, the brand Sunday. That's right, Launch with God is a fabulous book for those Christian entrepreneurs or heck, even want to be Christian entrepreneurs. Get a little taste of what to expect. And tap into that godlike quality that we all have since we're made in the image of God, y'all. So definitely check out that book if you want to know what the heck we're referring to, baby, because it's good stuff indeed. You'll definitely be seeing the good too in more ways than one later this year as well. So any parting words before we close up shop, my man? Man, I just really appreciate the opportunity to be on and chat with you. So thank you for having me. I'm uh, excited to excited to play this back. So appreciate you. Thanks a bunch for sharing some of your time out of your day to listen to the Going North podcast. I would be really honored if you head over to the website goingnorthpodcast.com and share this episode with someone that you care about. And also, for bonus points, if you like, click on the shop tab on the website and grab some gear. Advance others to advance yourself if you haven't already. Have a great rest of of your day and keep advancing north to your greatness.